We're excited today to uh, gather with y'all and worship our risen Savior. Uh, I see you all getting to your place. There's a preacher's wife. We should have known better. <laughs> I just lay it. I'm just lay it, Terry. I love you. Gentlemen, if you'll remove your hats, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer before we start. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. We thank you for Jesus Christ who reconciled us to you, Father God, as he was buried and rose again on the third day and ascended to heaven and is now seated at your right hand. We thank you, Jesus, for saving us. We pray that anyone who doesn't know you would come to know you today, Lord. We pray that all of those who do know you would just draw closer to you during this time. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place, that we would forever be changed. Pray that the message brought forward today would resonate in our hearts, Lord, and <clears throat> that we would just know you a little better. We thank you, and we love you, and we praise you, for you're worthy of all praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Well, are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away To a home on God's celestial shore I'll fly away I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away To a land where joy shall never end I'll fly away Oh, I'll fly away Oh, glory, I'll fly away When I die, hallelujah, by and by
still got it in the bad times The God of the day Is still God in the night You talk of faith when You're up on the mountain Oh, and talk comes so easy When life's at its best Now it's down in the valley Of trials and temptations That's when your faith is Really put to the test For the God on the it's still God in the valley When things go wrong He'll make them right And the God of the good times Is still God in the bad times For oh, the God of the day Still God in the night. Oh, the God of the day is still God in the night. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> Thank you. say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some, and right now, right now I'm losing back. Stood on this stage night after night, reminded the broken it'll be alright, but right now When there's nothing to bring me down But what will I say When I'm held to the flame Like I am right now I know you're able And I know you can Save through the fire With your mighty hand But even if you don't alone They say it only takes a little faith to move a mountain well, Good thing a little faith is all I have right now But God when you choose to leave mountains unmovable strength to be able to sing it is well with my soul i know you're able and i know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand but even if you don't my hope is you alone i know the sorrow and i know the hurt We'll all go away if you just say the word But even if you don't My hope is you alone You've been faithful You've been good all my days Jesus, I will cling to you Come what may Cause I know you're able And I know you can I know you're able And I know you can Save through the fire with your mighty hand But even if you don't My hope is you alone I know the sorrow 
is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I can't just I can't just turn that off, you know. Wow, it's hard to follow that. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How are we today? Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we'd like to welcome visitors. If you're a first time visitor, you've never been here before, please raise your hand. All right, we've got some visitors. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. Amen. What a blessed day. Keep your hands up, please. Amen. All right. Now, if you've been coming for a while and you've decided you'd like to make Rock and Country Church your church, please join us. It, it's, it's a wonderful church to be a part of. There are membership forms in the back. You fill them out and put them in the black mailbox. And Pastor Woody will talk to you about it. We have two Bible studies every week. Tuesdays at 10 a.m. with Miss Barbara. She does a wonderful job. And then Wednesdays at 6.45 with the pastor. He does a wonderful job, too. We're studying John. What a great, great book. Um, let's see. Current events, and I want to uh, make a few announcements before I read what's in here. Prayer around the flagpole in seven points tomorrow at 11 a.m. Please don't forget like I did last month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then um, next Sunday is our Easter dinner. And uh, the church is going to provide hams. We will have three hams up here Wednesday night. If someone could take them home and, and cook them, we'd appreciate it. Well, I think the church is also going to provide some chicken, and there's a sign-up sheet for all the side dishes. So please join us for our Easter dinner. It'll be great. There is a Turning My Scars Into Stars Ladies Conference, also on the 5th and 6th. Um, it's in Athens. It's in The information's in here. You can read all the information on it. April 6th is our lamb breakfast, or not our lamb breakfast, the men's lamb breakfast at 8 a.m. And then our monthly luncheon, I already talked about that. Also, the, our band jam is the same day after our meal from 2 to 5. It's lots of fun, so join in on that too. Now, we've got some really wonderful things coming up. Of course, our resurrection celebration is right around the corner. Amen. The 18th through the 21st, and it's going to be wonderful. So please, everybody, come. We're also going to have an Easter egg hunt on that Saturday for the kiddos. So we need you to please bring filled eggs if possible and put them, you'll see that, in the front where they go. We appreciate your help on that. And then, this is far off, but we've got to start planning this now. We've got a women's conference July 20th. Woo -woo. And there is a sign-up sheet back there, ladies, because we need to start forming our committees and working on it. So if you could sign up so we can get our committees together, we'd really appreciate it. Kathy, sign me up, babe. Oh, okay. I think you're signed up, Holly. <laughs> Also, there are some items in the kitchen. I'm going to try this one more time. There are some nice glass casserole dishes in the kitchen that somebody has left. If you would pick them up, we'd appreciate it. <laughs> also, there are a variety of books back there available to anyone if you'd like to kind of try and start a little library. Right now, they're in the kitchen. But you can go through that and uh, see if there's anything you like. Now, we do not pass hat, boot, or plate here. You all know that, that come all the time. Our famous black mailbox. You put your tithes and offerings in there. We also have a arena fund, a building fund, branch of life. 
and the RCC TV that Pastor does. There is a jug back there for your loose change. As Donna says, $100 bills, whatever. <laughs> for the children's ministry, that would be a huge help. And then there's some uh, places that we need some help. You can read that also in your bulletin. We always need help. So if anyone would like to step up and help in any way, just talk to the pastor. He'll lead you to the right person to speak to. Before we get to the prayer list, there are some I've added. Miss Edie needs our prayers. And then there's a lady named Keely. Manuel. Perez, Ernie Garner, and Sheena and her sister. We'd like to add them to our list. All right. Men, if you will remove your hats, we'll all go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with such praise and such honor for your name. We are just blessed to be here, Lord able to shout our praises to you Lord so many people aren't even allowed to do that so we are so blessed in this country and we thank you for that we pray for everyone on this list that you will wrap your arms around them heal them of whatever it is they're going through you know you know Lord and uh, I want to pray for our homeless as they struggle just to get by day to day our military personnel and all of our first responders because we have the freedoms we have today because of all of them and the protections we have because of all of them so special prayers for them today lord i pray for our church for our music ministry for pastor as he leads us today in the message and all these things i ask in jesus precious name amen, amen. Thank you, lord. Wonder, 
such a marvelous mystery. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was in his knees to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of Kings. You and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was in his knees to come. With all creation I sing, praise to the King of Kings. You are We 
believe, we believe in God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back. country church we're glad to... nope nope <laughs> yes <laughs> you took my thunder <laughs> I definitely want to welcome back Miss Meyer and brother George they've been going to Florida they uh, they take off and go down there with those uh, what do they call them snowbirds or something like that or well, uh, they go down there and enjoy Florida, and this whole place is empty. I mean, Seven Points is just empty without them. We miss y'all. We love y'all very, very, very much. Uh, hey, brother, uh, I wonder, uh, do you want to go back and do Children's Church? You're the only young in here today, so all right. Well, then we will definitely, uh, Miss Terry will take you back, and you tell her, you teach her everything she needs to know, okay? <laughs> all right. A couple of things. Real quick, before we get started, uh, we're not going to go just yet, buddy. We'll, di we'll dismiss you in just a second, okay? Yep. He's eager. Yeah. Yeah. He Hey, he's eager. He's going to get back there and show you a thing or two. Uh, yes. Still Okay. All right. Um, the lamb breakfast that is coming up next Sunday, uh, guys, I encourage you to go out there and find some other guys and bring them. All right. So we would love to uh, fill this place up. Uh, uh, we they, uh, It's a living adopted men's ministry, which is area churches that get together and we do a men's breakfast. And uh, uh, this month is uh, here at our church next month it'll be at a different church and next month it'll be at another church etc but anyway that's this coming Sunday at 8 a.m. so if you can join us for that men we would uh, yeah that's what I said Saturday y'all y'all passed <laughs> Saturday, sat, and I even wrote down Sunday, <laughs> Saturday, it is Saturday morning, the first Saturday of every month, we have our uh, our lamb breakfast, and then the third Saturday of every month, we have our men's breakfast here at this church, where our ministry to men here at this church, so join us for that, both at 8 o'clock. Again, welcome back, George and Myra, I, we are so, so happy we've missed you guys dearly. Um, also, uh, next Sunday, and it will be Sunday after our fellowship meal we will have our band jam so if you can join us for that that would be great uh, if you can sing and dance and do whatever you do uh, play an instrument or whatever join us uh, it's just a bunch of guys sitting in together and, and playing some good praise and worship music so it would be awesome if you uh, would join us for that uh, with that let's go ahead and pray up our service today our minister our ministry today and uh, dismiss our child <laughs> I can't say children. And Miss Terry will go back with him. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come into your house and worship and praise you and glorify you with our worship and praise, Lord, because it is all about you. It's all about what you have done for us and us trying to thank you for it in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Even though it's a very small way, it is still from our hearts, Lord. Our hearts are full of joy knowing you, and we thank you for the opportunity to worship you and praise you and glorify you with our worship and praise. Lord, I ask you to use this today as your tools and your best vessel, Miss Terry and I, so that we can bring forth the word, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, that it may go and dwell into the hearts, souls, and spirits of those who hear your word today, resonate, grow, take root, and flourish, and bear good fruit, good fruit to all the nations. Lord, may we serve you and continue serving you. Continue blessing us so that we can be a blessing to others and glorify you with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and dismiss our child.
He, he looks like a pretty young, uh, good sized young man. He might not be a child anymore. We ain't put him in the adult groups. Are we going to have a sunrise service? Oh, yes. 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 It'll all be, it'll all be on there. We will definitely have, uh, when we put the schedule out for the revival, it'll go uh, Wednesday, uh, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, and uh, Saturday night we'll be outside. And then Sunday morning at 645, we'll have our sunrise service, just like always. Then we go eat breakfast. And then we come back and, uh, and do our normal uh, 10 a.m. service outside. Last year we had, a, I think it was 136. Is that what it was, Jack? 136 folks? 146. 146 out there. So that was uh, pretty awesome. So let's plan on that again. All right? Yesterday, we had a memorial service here for Miss Dorothy Johnson, uh, the mother of, of Miss Glenda, and uh, Sandy is not here, so, uh, but anyway, of Miss Glenda and her sister Sandy, and they, you have a brother, right? Yeah, and a brother. And uh, I didn't really know Miss Johnson very well. I'm going to call her Sister Dorothy. But as I listened to people talk about her life, and how awesome she was and how much she loved the Lord. One of the things that Kenny told me that really stuck out is whenever she greeted you a lot of times, she would say, hey, how are you doing? Do you know Jesus? Amen. That was, that was what she did. Amen. She made sure that everyone, everyone that she met knew Jesus. And if she didn't, if you didn't know Jesus, then as I understand and, and kind of gather from all the comments yesterday, before you left her presence, you knew who Jesus was. Amen. All right. Now, that's the kind of person that we need to be. That's the kind of person we need to be. Well, what gave her what gave her the power to do that? You know, we go back and we look in the scriptures and we look at, uh, and I've got a couple of scriptures that I'm going to refer to today. You don't have to go to go to there, but uh, if you want to, you can. But uh, I thought of, started thinking about the disciples this morning whenever I prayed it up and was talking to God about what I'm going to preach on today or teach on today. And uh, this is this is what he gave me. Uh, his disciples, Jesus had 12 disciples. And... Uh, they were just regular people. They, actually, they were fishermen. They were kind of even the lower class, if you will. But they were just regular people. But they ended up, they ended up doing a mighty, mighty thing for Christ, for God, in spreading His Word. They ended up being powerful, powerful ministers of the gospel. Matter of fact, these fishermen that at one time or another left Jesus and fled from him ended up dying for him. Amen. All of them with the exception of John the Apostle John died a martyr's death. Every one of them. Some of them were crucified. Some of them had their heads cut off. Some of them were stabbed with a sword. Just different things. Some of them were tossed off of a cliff. Just different things. But they all died for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I was wondering about these guys and what gave them the power to do these things. And uh, he, Jesus gave me uh, Matthew 26. So if you want to turn there, we're going to look at a couple of scriptures there. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. I'll wait till you get there. If you don't have a Bible, you'd like to follow along, and I do encourage you to, so that you can see whatever I teach comes out of the Bible. Uh, we've got some Bibles back there, so if you would like one, raise your hand. We'll be sure and get you one. Everybody good? Amen. Amen. All right, verse uh, 47. 26, Matthew 26 and 47. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived with him, with uh, with him was a very large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas says, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Wow, think of that now. Jesus didn't say, You dirty rat! You stinking varmint! 
<laughs> no, he says, do what you have to do, what you came for, friend. Yeah. Jesus still loved him, even though he messed up. Pretty bad, right? He st Jesus still loved him. Let's go over to uh, 30, uh, 38, 26 and 38. 26 and 38. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. This is what Jesus is saying. He's telling his disciples, his friends, his buds, his, his partners, his best guys. He says, My soul is overwhelmed to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Verse 39, going a little farther, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not my will, but as you will. Verse 40, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Wait a minute. Aren't these his best friends? Right. Aren't these the ones that are supposed to come alongside him and says, Hey, we got your back, brother. We got your six. We're with you. We'll help you. We're going to be here for you. And he comes back and he finds them sleeping. He says, couldn't you men keep watch for me for just an hour? Can't you hang with me for just an hour? Can't you be there for me for just one hour? Jesus went away a second time, verse 42. My father, it is not possible for, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, again he found them sleeping. Again, he found them sleeping. Then to go on with it, he finds them, he goes away again and prays again the same prayer, and he comes back again and three times they're asleep. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of friend is that? Is that the kind of friend you want? Hey, I'm about to die of stress here. I'm so stressed out, I just cannot handle the pressure that this is causing me. Oh, well, that's your problem. We're going to take a nap. Right? What kind of friend is that? Mm. Well, now, they professed earlier to be his friend. Oh, man, were they ever professing to be his friend? Let's go to uh, verse 34, Matthew 26 and 34. Peter replied, actually, let's go to 32. But after I, I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Now, just so that you know who was in the Garden of Gethsemane with him whenever they were sleeping, that was James and John and Peter. James and John. Now, all of his disciples came with him, but he took James, John, and Peter, and he went a little bit farther with them. And he, those were his closest friends. And he said, look, guys, I want you to, I want you, what he wants them to do is pray for him. I want you to pray for me. Stand here and pray while I go and pray. Well, I go and get with the Father and pray. I want you to pray for me. I want you to have my back. I want you to be with me in, in prayer. And they went to sleep. <laughs> These great friends that said, Peter said over in, uh, in 33, I, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. And then, of course, Jesus comes back and says, truly, I tell you, Jesus answered this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Peter says, oh, no, not me. I am your man. He says, even if I have to die with you, verse 35, I will never disown you. Now, most people leave this last part off. And all the other disciples said the same. See, his bud says, no, no, man, we're with you. We're with you thick and thin through it all. It doesn't matter. We're going to be with you. Now, we know the story. Later on, as a matter of fact, we can go there. Um, did I even mark it down? 26 and maybe I didn't mark it down. Anyway, later on, and whenever they came to arrest Jesus. Oh, here it is right here. Verse uh, 26, or chapter 26, verse 56. This is as they were arresting Jesus and taking him away. Now, they, remember, these are the guys that says, we will die with you. We will be with you. We got your back. We're, we're right here for you. 
56, it says, But this is all that had taken place for the writings for the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. And fled. They ran away. When the going got tough, the wheat got going and they took off. And they left him hanging on his own. They deserted him. <coughs> what kind of a friend is that? But then we go on and we study through the scriptures and we find out over in the book of Acts and over in the other uh, books of the Bible how awesome these guys became. I just told you a minute ago how every one of them, especially Peter, especially Peter, became mighty, mighty men of God, mighty, mighty disciples of the word and went out and spread the gospel unto their death. Many of them, Peter himself volunteered to be crucified upside down because he felt he was not worthy to be crucified as Christ his friend was. They became mighty men of God. But they didn't start out that way, did they? No, no, no. They didn't start out that way. Kind of like the way we start out sometimes. When Christ comes into our heart and touches our heart, we say, oh man, I'm on fire for Jesus. I'm going to go out and tell the whole world about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to save everybody. And then about three, six, maybe a year later, three, six months, maybe a year later, oh man, I don't really want to go to church today. Oh man, do I have to, I know Lord, you, you're trying to get me to read my Bible. I'll, I'll read it someday if I can find it. Yeah. See, that's where our lives generally go. When Christ saves us, and we're on fire. We have that power. We have that urge. We have that desire. We know the love of Christ and the love he gave for us on the cross. And we feel that in our soul and in our spirit. But then it kind of becomes, ah, well, you know. I know he loves me. I know he died for me. But I've already got over all that stuff. We kind of fall to the side. It happens to a lot of people. Take Paul, for instance. Who was Paul? First, he was Saul. Over in Acts 9, you can read how Saul was a persecutor of the church. Over in 9 and 1, you can see that he, he searched out Christians to try to put them in jail and have them imprisoned and have them killed. He was on a mission to destroy what was called the way, which was Christianity. This new religion, if you will, that has started through this guy, Jesus. It was his desire to put a stop to it all until one day on the road to Damascus, he had an encounter with Jesus. And Jesus changed his name to Paul. And he says, and I'm going to show you what you must suffer, what you must suffer on my behalf. And Paul wrote more than half of the New Testament. Amen. He became probably the most important, if you will, other than Christ himself, man of God that walked the earth. Our Bible is based on the inspiration God had put in his heart. The New Testament, the New Covenant, the covenant of grace that we live under. Paul wrote the vast majority of it. What changed Paul? What changed the disciples? What changed Miss Johnson? She wasn't born that way. There's a person that we don't talk about very much. Last week we talked about over in 1 Peter, we talked about Jesus and salvation, how we are to become holy through Jesus Christ. But there's a person that we don't talk about very much that is a part of the Trinity that most of the time we say, oh yeah, I know, I, I feel it and this, that, and that. But then we just kind of let it go. We don't talk about him very often. But he's probably... Just, well, he is just as important as Jesus. Just as important. And that's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I'm not trying to tell you, and I want to talk today about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about the gift of God, which is the Holy Spirit. 
You see, Jesus, and we learned this last week, we saw this over in 1 Peter, and we also can see it in other scriptures. Jesus, I think it's in Philippians 2, I think, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is in heaven. Jesus is not here. So why do we say, oh, Jesus, help me out. Oh, Jesus, do this. Oh, Jesus, do that. Jesus is not doing the work. Jesus is not here. Well, I've got to have some Jesus today. Well, you're not going to get it. Because Jesus ain't here. Now, understand. Jesus is just as important as the Holy Spirit. Jesus is just as important as the Father. The Father is just as important as Jesus and the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. There's not one. Now, we know the Father is the ruler of all, including Christ. But Jesus is extremely important. But Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is a human being. Now, don't ask me how to explain it because I don't know. But according to Scripture, Jesus, the man, is seated at the right hand of the Father in the third heaven. Amen. He's not here. Preach it. Because if he were here, he would be sitting right there, let's say. And of course, everybody would be around him, right? Right? Sure they would. But what about the other churches in the area? They wouldn't have Jesus. That's right. What about the churches up in Dallas? They wouldn't have Jesus. Would you think Jesus would come to this church as opposed to going to maybe First Baptist Dallas or something? And I'm not, I love that church. I've been to it. It's a beautiful, beautiful church. Uh, but Jesus can't, he can only be in one place at a time. That's why he would take his 12 guys and he says, look, guys, you come and sit with me and talk with me and be with me and back me up. And I'm going to teach you for about three years what my job on this earth is as a man. And then whenever I leave, I want you to continue. Wait a minute. When you leave, you can't leave. What are you going to do if we leave? He said, I must leave. I must leave. Let's go to John 14. Gospel of John, chapter 14. Gospel of John, chapter 14. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, not the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's a totally different subject. We're going to talk about the third member of the Trinity. The person that is here today in your church, in, sitting right next to you. Matter of fact, if you are saved, he is inside of you today. This person. Amen. This person. He is inside of you today. Why? Because he can be inside of Gary. He can be inside of Holly. He can be inside of Patricia. He can be inside of Timothy. He can be inside of Myron George. He can be inside of me even, believe it or not. <laughs> He can be in each and every one of us. Why? Because he is the Holy Spirit Amen. of God. He's not a man. If he were a man and, and he was sitting next to Holly, then it would be just him and Gary sitting next to Holly, right? But Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father in the third heaven. That's what Scripture tells us. So he is not here. But the Holy Spirit is. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is everywhere. And we don't seem to recognize that or realize that sometimes. Whenever we need help, who do we call? Oh, Jesus, help me. Jesus said, no, me said, not me. Oh, Jesus, get me out of this. I promise I'll never do it again. Jesus says, not me. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, won't you come and do this? Oh, Jesus, won't you take care of my neighbor over here? <laughs> Jesus is not me. Jesus on the cross said, my work is finished. That's right. I'm finished. In chapter 17, the actual Lord's Prayer. The book of John, Jesus says, in, uh, in the, starting at uh, verse 1, he says, Father, glorify me by taking me back home to be with you. With the glory I had before the beginning of time. Bring me back in your presence. And that's exactly what the Father did. Jesus is not here. 
Jesus is not going to physically help you. Jesus is a physical man in the third heaven. I can't explain that part. When you get up there, you have to ask God. All right. But that's where he's at. However, the Holy Spirit is here. And the scripture tells us how it works. Let's go to uh, verse 6, John 14 and 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is very, very true. That is a true statement. You need to underline it, circle it, highlight it, whatever you do, because you need to know that. No one goes to the Father except through Jesus. There is no other way to heaven except through Jesus. If you really know me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know me and have seen him. You see that? Jesus is God. God, is, God the Father is Jesus. The Holy Spirit is God the Father. The Holy Spirit is God the Son. It's the Trinity. It's the Holy Trinity. It's the three in one. Three different persons, if you will, and, and I was explaining this to Terry this morning. The Holy Spirit is not a person. God the Father is not a person. They are persons in Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. Jesus even tells us that God is a spirit and we must worship him in spirit, God the Father. However, they are all three accumulated as being as one. And so Jesus is also God the Father, though he is not equal to God the Father. I know it's kind of hard to understand. And the Holy Spirit is also God the Father and, and Jesus. Although they is not equal to them, he is still the same as them. Now, I know that sounds kind of confusing, right? That's why we have what's called faith. Amen. We believe it by faith. Why? Because we don't always understand everything. It can be a little difficult to understand. But let me tell you, to, uh, lay, lay this on you. Water, ice, and, and steam. It's all water. That's right. Okay? Every bit of it is water. It's different forms. One is a solid, one's a liquid, one's a gas. But it's all still water. That's right. Now, that's just an easy way to try to think of it. There's three different things, but they're all still one. All right. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough. That'll be enough for us if you just show us who the Father is. Can't you see Jesus sitting there going, Philip? <laughs> right? Really? <laughs> what did I just tell you, Philip? Didn't I just say, from now on, you know, uh, you know him, for you have seen him. Then Jesus goes on to help Philip out a little bit more. Don't you know me, Philip, even after I've been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. See what scripture says? Oh, well, I don't really believe that. I had a guy call me up one time. He says, do you believe that Jesus is God? I said, sure I do. I said, he says, well, I can't come to your church then. I said, okay, fine, don't come. Right. He says, he's the son. I said, yes, he is the son, but he's also God. Well, that's not right. That's not, I said, dude, you need to read your Bible. Amen. Because it just said right here, and you can also see it over in John 10 and 30, where it says, I and the Father are one. <coughs> Even though they're three different ones. See, it can be kind of confusing, but that's why we have what's called faith. We believe it and we receive it because the Word says it. All right? We don't quite understand it. Do you understand the, uh, the uh, scientific anatomy of an atom? I don't either. I don't either. I know there's neutrons and protons and whatever, whatever, whatever. But guess what? You're an atom. And I don't mean A-D-A-M. I mean A-T-O-M. But you're an atom. You're made up of atoms. That chair's atoms. This concrete's atoms. The ceiling is atoms. Everything is made up of atoms. Amen. Do we believe it? Yeah, because science has proved it, right? Do we understand it? No. But it is, whether we understand it or not. Same way with the Trinity. We may not get it. Same way with Scripture. We may not understand it all. But it's been proven to be so. 
And so by faith, we believe it. Amen. By faith, we receive it. Verse 10. Do, don't you believe that I am, the Father, I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it is the, uh, it is the Father living in me. See that? The Father living in me, in Jesus. There is one. Believe me when I say I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe by the evidence of the works themselves. Amen. Very truly, verse 12, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do works will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. You see the guy sitting there going, oh no, you can't go. You got to stay here. We can't do this without you. We can't do it without you. You're, you're the boss. You're the leader. You're our inspiration. You're everything. Jesus knows they're thinking that. He's fully aware of that. But yet his destiny and his desire is to go back to be with the Father. Not to be here. Believe me, he loves you. And if he could be here, and someday he will be. And then you will be able to be with him in the physical. But not right now. Now our sister Dorothy yesterday is with him right now. Amen. She's with him. That has been her heart's desire is to return to Christ. She had him on this earth for a short time. And now she has him for eternity. Man, I want to go there. Amen. I want to go there. I'm ready. I'll go there when the Lord says go there, right? Amen. That's right. Uh, where did I leave off? 13? Uh-huh. Somebody keep up with me here because I'll lose my spot. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Now, that doesn't mean, okay, Lord, well, I want a new wife. I want a new husband. I want a new whatever, whatever. Okay, it has to line up with, the, with the Lord's, uh, what the Lord's desire is for your life, all right? It can't be just some weird thing. A lot of people take that out of context. I sure would like a new truck, though, Lord. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. In Jesus' name. No. <laughs> hey, just throwing it out there, you know. Maybe his, maybe it's his will someday, right? Never My old truck's still good, and I thank him for it. Verse 15. <laughs> if you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you the advocate. Uh-oh. Who's the advocate? He will give you an ad another advocate. <laughs> To help you and be with you forever. Whoa, who is this? What's, what is he giving us here? See, Jesus has to go back to the Father. But if, if you ask, he will give you an advocate, the spirit of truth. Now, I kind of looked this up today, and if you want to write all these down, there's like 14 or 15 of them. It's the names and characters of the Holy Spirit. All right? He is the author of Scripture. He is God's breath. When God breathed into these men to write the books that we have in our laps, He was the breath of God that inspired them to write. He's the comforter, the counselor, the advocate. He's the convictor of sin. Jesus doesn't do it. Jesus is in the third heaven, seated next to the Father. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin. All right? Not condemns, convicts. Amen. He is a deposit given by God, a seal of God. He is a guide. He's an indweller of believers. Not of all people. Indweller of believers. I mean, he lives inside of us. He is an intercessor. He is a reveler and the spirit, a revealer, sorry, a revealer and spiritual, he is the spiritual truth. Or the spirit of truth, I'm sorry, spirit of truth. The spirit of God, of Christ, the spirit of life. He is the teacher, and he is the witness. 
Uh, that's a pretty powerful order. But that's what the Holy Spirit is for us, for each of us. He is all those things to help us and guide us and direct us. Why? Because Jesus is not here. Jesus is at the third heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. So all these things, the Holy Spirit is sent here to help you with. That's quite a bit of stuff. He's a pretty powerful guy and pretty important guy to recognize. And most of the time, we don't even think about him. The world cannot accept him because it is it is neither sees him nor knows him. I started reading that and I thought, boy, you know, that is so right. We don't even bring to mind most of the time the Holy Spirit, except when we we do our prayers and we say, you know, by the Holy Spirit, you know, it's kind of a cliche type thing. It seems to be or something that we just say on a regular basis. But do we really know it? The, the scripture says we don't we don't know him. We don't even know him because we don't see him and we don't think of him that often. We know his power that he has because we read it in scriptures. We know the gifts that he gives because we read it in scriptures. But we don't really recognize the Holy Spirit. What we recognize is Christ, which is fine. But let's not forget about Christ's Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. Jesus says, we're going to see it in a little bit. Jesus says, I must return to the Father. Why? So that the Father and Him can, can be, become one. One. And then send their Spirit to be with you. You see? That's how He works. The Father is not here. Jesus is not here. But the Spirit of the Father and Jesus combined, which is pretty doggone powerful, is here. Yes, yes. So we need to recognize and give thanks for the Spirit of God in Christ. And we failed to, I think we failed to do that. We failed to recognize how much power we have inside of us. Now we go into the gifts and understand those things, those things, then we understand some of the power. But let's just understand this. Your salvation is given to you by whom? The Holy Spirit. It is because of Him that He comes inside of you and you get your salvation. If He didn't exist, then would you imagine the line that would be standing in front of Jesus? Oh, wait a minute. I think Jesus is up there about, about 10, 12 miles. We ought to get there hopefully in about 100 years or so. Hope I lived that long. You'd never make it. You'd never make it. Because Jesus was just one man. And he could only do so much. That's why... He got tired. Scripture even tells us he'd be, in, he'd be with his disciples and all that. And he said, dude, put me in the boat out there so I can take a nap. <laughs> These people wear me out. Right. <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, I don't know. We got like seven billion people or whatever it is. Let's just say everybody came to Christ at the same time. Oh, and there was one Jesus. Where do you think your number would be? Yeah. Right? You probably wouldn't live long enough in order to get to Jesus to get saved, right? So guess what? He made a way. He made a way that each and every one of us at any point in time in our life at any time in our life could say, yes, Jesus. And he would be there. In the form of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you would receive that Holy Spirit of God the Father and Jesus to live with you forever. Amen. Forever. Not for a little while. Not for the six months that you're going to be faithful. Not for the three months you're going to be faithful. Not for the couple of days. Not for, oh, well, I got my ticket punched. I'm good to go. I'm going to live like hell now because I'm going to heaven. God no, the Holy Spirit stays with you because he seals you. It's what it says. It's what the scripture says. You're promised a seal of the Holy Spirit. Can you fall away? You better believe you can. Have you done it? 
Yeah, I have. And probably many of you have. Now, I know none of you have fallen away as far as I have, but, but you can. But guess what? He's still there. He's still there for you. Amen. All you have to do is call on his name. I think I'm on verse 18. I will not leave you as orphans, Jesus says. I will come to you before long. The world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also shall live. Wow, that's a heck of a promise, right? right. Amen. Right. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father and the Father is in me and I am in you. See that? I'm in the Father, the Father is in me, and I am in you. Amen. That means you have the Father, the Son, and the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit living in you. Amen. Oh, I'm so alone. All my friends left me. Nobody loves me. I'm all by myself. <laughs> You're never by yourself. Amen. Think about it now. Never by yourself. Right. Okay? Preach it. Never. That's scary. Sometimes I want to say, oh, sorry, Jesus. <laughs> Never by yourself. Whoever has my command and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Amen. Now, Jesus is not going to show himself to you. All right? But the Holy Spirit will make himself revealed to you. Amen. You see, that's how it works. Then Judas, not Iscariot, said, but Lord, why do you intend to show us yourself, the, show yourself to us and not the whole world? Think about that question he asked. Why do you intend to show yourself to us and not the whole world? Because the world will not accept him. You see, even today, hopefully not in here, but it could be. There could be someone in here today who refuses to accept Christ. Amen. Who refuses to see Christ. And you may rock on. You know, nothing happened. Everything's good. You may go a week, a month, a year, or whatever, 10 years. Oh, well, I'll get around to it. I'll get around to it. If you were to die today and not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you would go to hell. Amen. Okay? Now, I'm not trying to be a hellfire and damnation, but that's what the Word says. That's the truth. Now, if you do know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior and you die today, guess what? You immediately go to heaven. Your soul and spirit does. Miss Dorothy, the, the moment that she passed away, she went to be with the Lord. She was with him. She was in the presence of Jesus. She inhaled her last. She exhaled in heaven. That's how it works. That's how it works. It's that simple. But if you don't have Jesus... You do not exhale in, in heaven. No. Verse 23. Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and I will come to them and make my home with them. There it is again. He said, I will come and be with you. I will make my home in you, with you. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Verse 25. All this I have spoken while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. You see, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within you. And you hear that. I know you've heard us talk about that small, still voice. That's not Jesus. It's not God. It's the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus and God. But it's the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Now, some people in the old scriptures, they want to call it the Holy Ghost. And that's fine. But it's not the ghost. Okay. It's not one of them things. It's certainly not Casper. No. All right. But however, it is the Holy Spirit of God himself and his son, Jesus Christ, that come and live inside of you. Amen. And he will teach you. You see, whenever I go into the, my study in the mornings, 
and I pray up the message. So, Lord, show me what you wanted me to teach today. It's not Jesus that gives it to me. It's not God that gives it to me. It's the Holy Spirit that gives it to me. And I recognize it every morning. You know, I, I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. for Now, He is the Lord. He is the Lord just like Jesus is, just like the Father is. He is the Lord. He's a part of the Holy Trinity. He is one of the three. He is God Himself. And I say, thank you, Lord, for helping me, showing me, guiding me, and directing me. Amen. Do I do it all right? No. Do I get it all correct? No. But I do as he directs me, or I try to as best I possibly can. And that's all that God is asking you to do. He's not asking you to be perfect, because guess what? You'll never do it. You're never going to be perfect. Oh, well, you just hurt my feelings. You busted my bubble. I thought I was perfect. Guess what? You ain't. Right. You ain't. All right. None of us are. That's right. But we have one who is. Amen. Thank you see, we have one who is that lives in us and with us. That's right. He is perfect. He is perfection himself. Amen. And that's Jesus. And he lives in us. And he will guide and direct. That's what it says. <clears throat> I see, um, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and re will remind you. <laughs> I didn't like that part too much. In other words, he's saying, hey, Woody, you ain't supposed to do that. I told you that yesterday. Right. <laughs> and I also told you the day before and last week. Stop it. So I'm just kind of urging you again to know that God still don't like it. That's right. All right. So he'll remind us of the things God that displeases God. Yeah. All right. Then verse 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Hey. See, he's trying to tell his disciples because they're sitting there going, you can't go. Please don't go. <laughs> you ever, uh, I'm sure you have. Uh, I remember whenever I was a, uh, uh, my kids were little. They were little bitty kids, and I'd have to go to work, you know. And or like this is probably even a better example. Remember when you took your first your your child to uh, kindergarten or first grade or whatever? No, you're never coming back. I know, right? You can't leave me with these strange people. Right? They'll kill me and eat me. <laughs> you know, you can only imagine what's going through this baby's head. Yeah. But boy, they'll latch on to you and it's like, come on, get off my leg, kid. Right. Oh, you got to stay with the teacher. She's a sweet teacher. No! <laughs> That's kind of what his disciples were going through. Why? Because they were just regular people. They knew that they weren't worthy of the stuff that God, had, Jesus had been giving them. Jesus is fixing to turn the entire ministry that he's been working for to where he walked around and raised people from the dead, where he touched people and healed people, where he made the deaf hear, the blind see, the lame walk. He's fixing to turn all this over to them. Do you imagine if you had that kind of power? You'd be like, whoa, don't let me touch nothing. I don't know what's going to happen. I'll put my hands in my pocket and get those Air Force gloves on. <laughs> Jack will appreciate that. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> but imagine the power. Amen. Guess what? You have that power. Yes, we do. That's true. You have that power. Oh, you mean I'm going to go down to the hospitals and just go, healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed, be healed. It does not work that way. Why? Because God has a plan. And sometimes, sometimes his plan is not what our plan would be, right? And so sometimes people have to go to be with the Lord. Amen. Because it's their time. For you will, Lord, absolutely. It's their time. Every one of us were born at one time. Every one of us live at some time, unless the Lord comes back first, every one of us will die. It's a part of life.
It's hard to, to understand sometimes, and it's hard to comprehend, and yes, it breaks our hearts sure. because of our loss. Amen. Because of our loss. However, and I think we, we really touched on this yesterday, as far as Miss Dorothy, man, she's dancing and singing in heaven, baby, let me tell you. She's loving it. She's loving it. Absolutely. She's healed completely. She's well. And she's with Jesus. That's why she goes around and says, Hey, how you doing? Do you know Jesus? Amen. If you don't, you're fixing to. But that's what we need to be. Why are we not that way? Why are we not like Paul? Paul says, Even if I'm poured out like a drink offering... In another scripture, he says, for me to die in Christ is gain. Amen. For me, in other words, he's saying, I know I'm supposed to be here for a little while for your sake, but for me to die, I gain. Why? Because I'm in the presence of Jesus. That's right. Amen. Amen. Tell it. How did he do that? Because he had the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of him, teaching and guiding and reminding him, you're going to be with Jesus someday. God loves you and he died for you. But until it's your time, God is welcoming you and asking you to come into his presence and receive the Holy Spirit of God, of Jesus, to live inside of you, to help you and guide you and direct your paths. Verse 28, you heard me say I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you will be glad that I'm going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And I have told you, I have told you uh, now before it does happen. So that when it does happen, you will believe. You will believe. Let's go over to 15 and 26. 15 and 26. Chapter 15 and 26. When the Advocate comes, the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who goes out from the Father, He will testify about me, and you will also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. You see that? For you have been with me from the beginning. Now what's Jesus saying there? You've been with me from the beginning, Vernon. You've been with me from the, the very beginning, James. You've been with me from the very beginning, Paul. Timothy, Gary, Jack, myself, Donna, Kathy, Kathy's. <laughs> You've been with me from the beginning. What's it saying there? He's saying, I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Amen. I had picked you out before the beginning of anything else. You're mine. He says, I've known you before the creation of time. Amen. I knew you. And you've been with me from the beginning. Whether you know it or not doesn't matter. Jesus knows it. Jesus knows it. Chapter 16, verse 7. Chapter 16, verse, verse 7. But very truly I tell you, it is for your own good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. And about judgment, because the Prince of this world now stands condemned. Condemned. Now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear now. Now this, take this in. Jesus has much more information that he wants to give you than what I can give you today. That's right. Much, much more information. Sure. That's why we go Bible study. That's why we, every Sunday we have another message. That's why every Tuesday morning, Miss Barbara does Bible study. Why? Because Jesus has more to tell you. Amen. This is where it comes from. It doesn't come from somewhere else it comes from the word of God Amen. Amen. 
It says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will not speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit received from me what he will make known to you. He receives from Jesus. You see, Jesus and the Father have this plan that they constructed, if you will, or put together in the very beginning of time before anything else existed. I mean anything else existed. And what he said was, the Father told Jesus, he says, someday, someday, and I know the day, but that day, whatever it is, because we don't know it, that day, it's about 2029, but that day you're going to go to the cross and you're going to die for a bunch of people. You're going to die for a bunch of people who don't even like you. Sure. You're going to die for a bunch of people who won't believe in you. Sure. You're going to die for a whole bunch of people who hate you and hate people who do believe you. Mm -hmm. right. You're going to die for them too. That's right. In hopes that, and this, uh, this I like, you know, I'm just sitting there visioning God, he just rolled out this long list. And he goes... This person, this person, this person, this person. All these people are going to come. I, I already know who all's coming. We already know this, right, Jesus? Yeah, yeah, we already know this. There's name, there's name, there's name, there's name. Ooh, Woody, are you sure we don't need to scratch that one off? <laughs> nah, we'll leave that one on there. <laughs> See, Jesus and God had a plan from the very beginning of time that you would be here to receive the Word of God today. You would be here. Okay? Why? Because he has much more to tell you. Amen. He has much more to tell you. Amen. That's why you need to get into your Bible study. If you do it on your own, that's fine, but do it. Let the Holy Spirit of God Amen. reveal Amen. to you what he wants you to know. That's, right. that's what I do every Sunday morning. Most of y'all that, that come here on a regular basis, you know how it works. I don't plan my sermons out. I have no idea what I'm going to teach on next Sunday. None whatsoever. Right. I'll go into my office Sunday morning. I'll pray it up, and God will give it to me. And that's exactly what he did this morning. I kind of knew from last week that it would be about the Holy Spirit, but I had no idea what it would be. I thought it was going to be on the gifts, to tell you the truth. But that's how Jesus works. Amen. But see, you don't have to wait till Sunday morning. You can do it tonight. You can do it tomorrow. You can do it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It doesn't matter. You can do it any time as long as you get in the presence of God. Amen. You get in the presence of God by yourself. Jesus tells us, go in our prayer closet. What he's talking about is, is just like Jesus, whenever he's told, me, he's told his guys, he says, y'all wait here a minute and keep watch for me. I'm going to go and be with the Father. Right. So see, sometimes you've got to get out of your normal environment. Get in the presence of God. Right. And get quiet. Get quiet. And let God speak. Yes. And he does. Because the Holy Spirit wants to talk with you. He has much to share with you. But you got to be receptive. Yeah. It doesn't come through Jesus. It comes from Jesus. It comes through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you don't have Jesus, you don't have the Holy Spirit. That's right. You see, the three work together. Yes, they do. You got to have one to have them all, and you got to have them all to have the one. That's right. So it's up to you. Amen. I love what Jesus has done in my life. Amen. Do I do it all perfect? No. no. <laughs> do, I, 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 do I do it really good? Well, I don't even think I do it good sometimes. Amen. But the point is... The point is, is that he never gives up on me. Amen. See, it doesn't matter what I've done. It doesn't matter where I've been. It doesn't matter what I even did yesterday. He still doesn't give up on me. Amen. 
Man, I can only say thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen, that's the truth. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me to guide and direct my path. Amen. Every day. Yes. Every day. Thank you. And that's available to you. It's available to you. The same amount of the Holy Spirit that I have is available to you. But will you receive it? I hope you have. Because God doesn't love me any more than He loves you. And He doesn't love you any more than He loves me. He loves us all equally. He is no partner of men. There is no difference between you and me in God's eyes. He died for you as much as He died for me, and He died for me as much as He died for you. Amen. The only difference is us. Scripture tells us that God had a perfect plan until we got involved. Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and because we got involved, it kind of got messed up. <laughs> but I'm asking you today, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, you do not have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not talk to you. You might hear some hoodoo voodoo stuff or something. I don't know. But you don't hear the Holy Spirit. Because He's not in your presence. Why? Because you have to have Jesus. That's the way it works. It doesn't matter whether you like it or agree or believe it. That's how it works. Because that's what Scripture says. So if you've not received Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, I pray for your sake, not mine. I'm good to go. If I dropped dead right now, I'd be with Jesus. Amen. I'm good to go. Amen. How about you? Do you know? Do you know? That if you die right now, and it is appointed to man to die once, do you know that you know that you know Certainly. you would be in heaven? Amen. If you don't, I'll show you how to change that. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, if anybody here today does not know Jesus as their Lord and as their Savior, I ask, Lord, that you touch their heart, soften their heart, open up their heart, Lord, and let them receive the word of Jesus. Let them receive the Holy Spirit into their lives. Yeah, we may not understand it all. We may not even believe it all yet. But Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nothing that comes from him is false. Nothing that comes from him is a lie. It is only truth. And he says the way to the Father is through him. In order to get to heaven, you must have Christ. How do you get Christ? He makes it very easy. Just repeat after me. You must mean it in your heart, but you must repeat after me, or you need to repeat after me. You must mean it in your heart, because God knows your heart. If you're saying, just saying words, then you're just babbling words and save your breath. But in your heart, if you know you need a Savior, then call on Jesus. Say, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, come into my life. Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I need I need the Holy Spirit living in me to guide and to direct me because I cannot do it on my own forgive me Lord Jesus of all my sins let me be a part of your kingdom in your precious name, Jesus, I ask. Amen. 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 If anybody needs prayer for anything, anything whatsoever, let's all stand for our last song. If anybody needs prayer, come forward and let us pray with you. We're, we're just believers. We're just guys. We're nothing special, but we do believe in prayer. We do believe in prayer. And we would love to pray with you for anything whatsoever. If you can't come to us, raise your hand, we'll come to you. Hey, sister. Hey, sister Carol. Take me past the other course into the holy place. Uh, past I can't go over here anymore. I'd like to go to the right bar. Lord, I want to see you face. We're going to lift you up. Standing in his spot, standing in his heart. We're going to pray for Ernie. Ernie is having a problem. We're going to bring you to the man. We're going to pray for him. He needs to 
and it's only by one place take me into the holy of holy take me in by the blood of the lamb take me into the holy of holy take the cold Touch my lips here and there. Oh, take a cold. Touch my lips here I am. Yes, take a cold. Touch my lips here I am. to someone else, please do so. God bless you all. See you next Sunday. Amen. Or Tuesday or Wednesday.